Alexa pause. Got it sorted together. Upper processor. Staging the VFD. Instead of doing a two stage based on tank temperature, so the microprocessor is enabling the VFD, and then it also has the high speed output on until the leaving water temperature gets up to like 130, where it is now. And then the second stage of high speed drops out and then it goes down to the slower program speed. And then it'll continue to heat until the tank temperature gets up to set point. So a little different than what I was doing with the thermostat over there. So, it's kind of cool. And if this thing doesn't uh, wind up working good enough, you know, I'll probably just throw a regular controller in there. But since I kind of threw it together, I thought I might as well try using it. So I built a water heater timer I used on, used it for like several years, like four or five years. Just turn along. 132, 132. I have the uh, microprocessor tuned for the upper temperatures, but then the cooler, as the water gets cooler, the uh, temperature is no longer accurate, it starts getting off. The further we go, because I just did a simple program to convert the analog to digital input and just make it to a temperature based at that point, my normal operating point. The curve of the uh, thermistors are not linear so you have to actually like look at use a lookup table or some intensive math I'm like eh, I don't care if the temperature is inaccurate if it gets down you know to like 70 degrees it, it, it doesn't change the operation at all I just care about you know, heating the water up to the set point and then uh, stepping it down when the leaving water temperature gets to the temperature I programmed into the microprocessor I can just change this. Family interrupted me there. Running pretty smooth. Still got a pretty good output there. It's running at 35 hertz. The water temperature, I don't know what the pressure might be, but it could be up there a little bit. <laughs> also got a real disconnect on here now. That switch was just temporary and it was junk. Still need to do a little bit of cleanup in here, but yeah. And I need to uh, actually cut a hole right here. Let me put a little deflector for the heat. Oh, there's heat coming out of the VFD. If I'm ever going to want to put the panel on. <laughs> Can't do what I see the contractors do all the time. I go on new construction all the time. Where freaking contractors enclose the whole VFD. <laughs> with no vents, no fan, no nothing. You really should have like a, you know, an actual fan in there. But if I could uh, cut a hole and just turn the air, it'd be fine. I would cut the hole up here, but uh, if it's ever burned or anything, I don't want flames to come out the, the holes or whatever. <laughs> So, rather have the hole on the side. And the fresh air come in the bottom, maybe a couple knockouts. Gotta get on that one of these days. So basically I have a microchip brand processor back there. And I have the various inputs and whatnot going to this plug. And then over here on the last three connectors, I just have 24 volts coming in to the triac outputs of these optical isolators. Optical isolators are basically uh, diode, light emitting diode and a photo transistor all in one casing. So there's no electrical connection from the input to the output. It's literally light <laughs> emitting inside those and then shines on the receiver and when the receiver detects the light, it, it biases the transistor output, or in this case, triac output because you put it's for AC power so 24 volts AC switches do that and that current is not very high so you in turn take that to these triacs which take AC input on the gate you know and it and it uh, turns these on Whoop, just hit the temperature turns these on 
and then uh, these are what's actually closing the 24 volts. So I have 24 volts here and here, and then I have in, in, out, out. So basically, just from uh, optical isolate or 24 volts goes to optic optical isolator back out in in and then the other one goes to that other optical isolator and back in into there and then it just the 24 volts go through the triax and out this way they just pull in the relays those triax could actually just pull on a full typical contactor if i wanted to so these uh little cube relays are nothing for these so the other thing i need to do <laughs> I uh, got to put in my safety. Oh, you know what? Never mind. My safety is still connected. I was thinking when I took out the thermostat that I high pressure limit was taken out, but it's not. It's right there. So. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. Uh, what has it been? It's been at least three weeks now, right? If maybe not a month or more since I installed this water source heat pump. And the heating element is disconnected helping the J box up there so that heating element is the heating elements are not working at all in that water heater it's been strictly heating our domestic water with the heat pump for about a month I think it's been kind of losing track with all the craziness going on so anyway with the temporary thermostat and everything we it, it worked actually pretty good it didn't vary that much and was had really hot water so we've been it's been running it up a little higher than we used to set with the electric element and with the frequencies turned down a little bit i don't even think we're getting up to 10 amps i think we're getting running like eight or so eight or nine so yeah <laughs> pretty cool